In North Carolina, student academic performance is measured in two ways, achievement and growth. Chances are you've heard these words before, but what are achievement and growth? How are they different? And what do they tell us about our students and teachers? Achievement, also referred to as proficiency, is pretty simple to understand. Does a student know the material at the time they're tested or not? Growth is a little more complicated. Growth compares students' expected progress over the course of one academic year to the progress they actually make in that year. If a student makes more progress over that year than was expected, that student exceeded growth, even if they're not at grade level. If another student makes less progress than was expected, they didn't meet growth, even if that student is a high achiever. By themselves, achievement and growth offer insights to student academic performance. But alone, they don't show us the full picture. Let's look at this another way. Meet Kyle and Adam. They'll be running a one mile race that represents one academic school year. Kyle crosses the finish line well ahead of Adam. So, in terms of pure achievement, he wins the race. But look closer at each of these runners. Kyle's a marathon runner who normally runs a five minute mile. This time, however, it took him six minutes. That means Kyle did well, but he didn't do as well as he was expected to do. Adam, on the other hand, just started running and was expected to walk the race in 20 minutes like he did in previous races. Instead, he ran the mile in 10 minutes. He still lost the race, yeah, but for an inexperienced runner, he did far better than was expected. And that's what growth measures. So what does this information tell us about their coaches? On one hand, Kyle won the race, but he fell a full minute behind his average time. And while Adam lost the race and is nowhere close to being competitive, his average time was cut in half, showing tremendous growth. So who has the better coach? Well, there's no clear answer. Having both of these measures, achievement and growth, gives us a better understanding of how the runners and the coaches are doing. But measuring one runner for one race is not enough information to really determine how the coaches are doing. I mean, what if Kyle hadn't had breakfast that morning? What you will need to look at is the achievement and growth of all the runners on the team in every race they've run over several years to find trends. Well, these same principles apply to teachers and their classrooms, even whole schools. While achievement data tells us whether students are on track for career or college, measuring growth across a classroom or school over several years allows us to see where students are making the most or least growth compared to where they started. This information can help identify best practices, effective schools, and excellent educators. These measures are far more complex than we could possibly show here, but the conversation is worth starting. To learn more and find more detailed information, visit best-nc.org slash growth and achievement.